Nick Holland, who runs partnerships for Grubhub. Nick, thanks a million for joining me. Yeah, of course. Thanks Appreciate for having me. So I get to ask the dumb questions because I'm the new guy in this relationship, but Grubhub and Freedom Pay have been working together for a while. I know something about your operation, but you know, I'm really interested to hear what's happening in your world, what's exciting, what Grubhub is doing right now that's uh, on your drawing board that we can talk about in public. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Uh, yeah, what's happening? Of course. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's just sort of interesting sort of the how the relationship between Freedom Pay and Grubhub is kind of sort of very slowly evolving. But, you know, you'll have to elaborate that on that. What is that? Well, I, I mean, there's, to my knowledge, I, I think there's there's not necessarily a formal relationship, um, but I know that we are working towards, and there's a lot of sort of a lot of conversations that we're having to get to a much better place because the companies obviously recognize that there's a lot that we could potentially do together. Yeah. I think especially within our closed ecosystem and in that campus space, you know, the, that sort of the conversation that I was having with you, where you know I came from a startup that was acquired by Grubhub, this closed ecosystem technology. Uh, sort of what we're doing that's really exciting in that space is, you know, we've seen a lot of success over the past decade leveraging this closed ecosystem environment, Grubhub campus at, you know, about 300 college campuses around the country. Wow, no small thing. Yeah, no small thing. It's, it's obviously it's a 10 years of development that have been sure. gone into this an acquisition by Grubhub, acquisition by Just Eat Takeaway, our European parent company. Uh, but now, you know, obviously with a lot more resources, we're really expanding, you know, where else has a need for this type of, you know, hyper-local, high density, high volume type of operation that needs the convenience of mobile ordering. So we've really expanded that model to sports and entertainment. You know, we launched at uh, Washington Commanders at FedEx Field last NFL season. Uh, this MLS season we launched with uh, Inter Miami down in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, and then we're also bringing it to the world of hotels and resorts. Last summer, we did a big project with Resorts World in Las Vegas. And what we're doing is leveraging the Grubhub technology to come onto any property and create a white label experience that lives inside the Grubhub app. So we can geofence an entire hotel property and when I walk into that property and I open Grubhub, I'm not seeing what delivers off -site. to yeah. from offsite. Exactly. I'm seeing a completely branded experience for that space, for that property. And I only see, you know, the restaurants that are that are, you know, within that within the confines of that property, whether it's a cafe in the front lobby, you know, might you might have fine dining, you might have convenient pickup, you might have a C store, you might even have, you know, hotel branded goods right. that you could order have delivered, order, pick up. Uh, we've been doing a lot with like smart lockers, things like that. You know, we, we just have a conversation just a few minutes ago with a couple other colleagues about the challenges and the opportunities that that presents. If you are able to kind of create a closed ecosystem in that kind of environment, which, which up until fairly recently, it wasn't that easy to do. You could do it in bits and pieces, but capturing and retaining a customer and all of their spend within your call it you know localized portfolio it's always there's always been leakage somewhere so it seems like the grubhub solution could really could really kind of i won't say duct tape it because that doesn't give it enough credit but you know really make that make that work yeah and then, you know it's funny you say we kind of duct tape it together but yeah no and what we're trying to do is kind of create that really nice cohesive experience for the property that's why it's you know it's really brand heavy it's it's the hotel brand first, we're just powering the experience for the user. Obviously Grubhub, you know, Grubhub Campus, Topingo, we have a massive breadth of experience creating a consumer experience. So now we're just using the, the, the on-site branding, the hotel branding. We're able to really create a nice, something that feels very familiar to the guest. We try to have it be really image heavy, really robust. You know, even with like the the ordering process, we try to have that be very conversational for the guest so that it feels a little bit more like they're placing an order with a person where it's sort of that step by step additive process where you're building a, a custom uh, order, whether it's a coffee, a salad, a sandwich, you sort of you name it. You have all the layers of customization that you would if you're placing the order over the phone or at a counter. But now you're able to do it from the convenience of your room or you know, when you're on the 
good example is at a conference, when I'm on the shuttle on my way back to my hotel, I could be placing my, my dinner order and it's ready and waiting for me instead right. of having to walk in, wait for it, pay for it. So this, so you're talking about something that goes beyond just the, the call it the, the payment ordering rails. You're talking about, the, about solutions that go all the way into hardware and UX and creating a, a, a whole experience. Absolutely. Rather than just some another way to order your food. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a big deal. And you know, I think even to to that point, Mike, uh, when you talk about you know the hardware and the user experience, because you know even though we're a mobile first POS effectively, where we're able to create a lot of efficiencies for the properties because of mobile, you know, you don't need somebody to answer the phone, you right. don't need somebody to take the payment. So to take that a step further, we even developed our own kiosk technology. And I think that might be something you might be somewhat familiar with. Yep. And within our on-site environments is these, you know, walk-up self-serve kiosks where it's effectively a touch screen. You know, you swipe in, you place your order, and payment is rendered right there at, at the sort of that, that point of sale, and it goes right to the operation. Sort of the nice thing there is that captures the rest of the consumers that maybe you don't have the app downloaded yet. Maybe they don't know about the app or maybe they're technology resistant or maybe they just don't have a smartphone right. or they forgot it in their room. But or it's just too much of a pain. You know, there's a million of those reasons. There's so many reasons that yeah. you might not have access to a mobile app, but now this captures that and it doesn't require the uh, operation to necessitate having somebody right there to accept payment, accept order. You're sort of creating this, again, this really nice cohesive experience where regardless of where you are or sort of what service you're trying to uh, get a hold of. At the and that network. feeds right into whatever the property management or whatever their, you know, uh, you know, source of truth is for customer data. Exactly right. Yeah. And I think that's that's one of the biggest things for us is the ability to integrate with with a PMS system is, you know, because no consumer wants to be told, oh, we have this great mobile ordering app. But you can but only you, use it over there. But you yeah. can't do room charges. Yeah. Or you know, on a college campus, you can't use your student tender right. or your meal plan. Right. Dollars. You've just you've just blown away the entire experience. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is huge. I can't wait to have more of these conversations seriously because I think we're just talking about the tip of the iceberg between what our respective companies do separately, but what we're what we're doing together. So uh, yeah. I think this conversation is going to go lots of places. So Nick. Thanks a million. Yeah, really great talking to you today, and I completely agree with you. I think there's there's tons of opportunity for us to, again, it's all about that the evolution of where these two companies could potentially go together. Well, then you and I are going to drink more coffee and make deals. Yeah, for sure. Thanks again. <laughs>